Can you guys even believe that it is October right now? Like what in the actual heck? Welcome back friends. I'm so excited about this video today. I am going to be recommending and sharing with you some of my favorite cozy, warm, not warm because it's fall, cozy, non-scary fall books. Isn't fall just the best time to cuddle up, maybe buy a fireplace? just maybe on the floor if you don't have a fireplace, you know, wherever, and just read a book. Like, it's just a mood. So I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some of my favorites. I think I have 12 or 13. Staying on brand with not having like 10 or 15. So I think I've got like 12. And let's just get started. All right, the first book that I have here is called Curse the Day by Annabelle Chase. This is a humorous, paranormal, cozy mystery novel. Okay, I'm sold. Well, it's about a girl named Emma Hart who is driving along the road one day up in the mountains and she sees this person who she thinks looks like is about to commit suicide. So she goes up there to try and stop him and little does she know that he's actually like a ghost and he's not actually committing suicide, she just thought he was. She ends up following him into this town called Spellbound, and it's a town that is filled with everything you could imagine, ghosts, vampires, werewolves, um, ghouls, uh, um, uh, what else are there? Um, you know what I mean. And while she's there, she actually discovers that she is a witch, and the public defender just was murdered, and she was actually a lawyer back in the real world and so they're like oh that's perfect you can take his spot and figure out who murdered him so it's a mystery and let me just tell you this book gave me absolute halloween town vibes because it's like it's so halloween town like the little girl figures out that she is a witch she goes to halloween town where it's just a normal town but everybody is magical and they're a vampire or they're a ghost or something that's exactly how this is but it's more it's not like adult, but she's graduated from college in it, and so she's an adult, but it doesn't read like an adult. It's definitely YA, if not even closer to middle grade, but it was just super fun and cozy. And this book takes place in a town called Spellbound, where paranormal is the new normal. So if that doesn't hook you already, I don't know what will. The next book that I have here is The Bake Shop at Pumpkin and Spice by Donna Kaufman and Kate Angle and Allison Charles. Does this cover not scream, like just cozy fall, like, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh, I wanna eat everything on this picture. But okay, I, I saw this at Target, I was walking around and I was like, I need that. It just sounds so cute. Between good natured Halloween tricks, frothy pumpkin lattes, and some very special baked goods for three Moonbright residents, moon bright residents looking for love whether they know it or not the spookiest thing will be how magical romance can suddenly be okay i know it sounds like super cheesy but pumpkin spice lattes halloween tricks halloween parades ghosts uh has everything that i want in a cozy fall read but yeah so it is three different short stories all taking place around the big shop in this town i think that people know each other in the stories. It's just kind of episodic the way it follows them. So yeah. Next up, we have The Wise and the Wicked by Rebecca Potos. Let me just start by saying once again, this cover is so pretty. And this book is about a family of witches, I believe they're a family, who has migrated from Russia to America. And in their family, it's known that when they come of a certain age, they have a vision and it basically tells them when they are going to die and how they are going to die. Throughout all of their history, it's never been something that they're able to change or that they're able to escape from. They just know that when they call it one's time, happens or when it comes that you just have to accept it and there's nothing you can do about it until one day our main character what's her name ruby i believe her aunt or someone in the family dies but it's not the way the vision said it was going to happen so all of a sudden she thinks that maybe she will have the power to change her future and that she might not have to die when her vision said she was going to die so i believe this book is going to discuss a lot about the power that we have to change our lives but also the courage that it can take when wanting to change something so yeah, I think that this is gonna be a great read. Also, it's more magical realism than it is like fantasy. Magical realism is perfect for fall, so I had to include this on the list. I'm so excited for the next one. Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. Have you guys not seen this hyped all over everywhere? Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook? Do people still use Facebook? Anyway, this book is the quintessential fall book. Okay, let's just open the front, like, come on. 
It's a freaking pumpkin patch. It's about two friends who are in high school and they have been working together at the pumpkin patch for years. They don't really see each other much at school, but they're best friends when they are together in the pumpkin patch. It's just their place. They've been there for so long and they just like, they love it. And this book takes place during their last fall at the pumpkin patch. The artwork is so cute. It's so Halloween-y. So if you want a quick read, you can just curl up and read on like a Sunday morning or, you know, Saturday morning or Friday, whatever day you like. And you can just go through this. You could probably get through this in an hour or so. Next up we have The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. And if this cover doesn't scream fall, I don't know what does. That, oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I want to frame all these books and put them on the wall. This book is about some friends who go, I think they're at a state fair or some sort of carnival or fair, and they go to see a psychic. The psychic tells them when they're supposed to die, and it follows them throughout their lives, kind of dealing with knowing when they might die and how that kind of affects them and changes them. On the inside of the cover, it says, if you knew the date of your death, how would you live your life? And this also takes place in the late 60s, early 70s, so you've kind of got that vibe going on. One thing that I love is that the book takes place over their lifespan. I love books that do that. I feel like you get to know the characters a lot better and it's just such a great way to read a story that takes place over such a long time. I. I believe that since it takes place over their life, parts of the book do take place during fall, but it's not set specifically during fall or winter or anything like that. But I wanted to have a wide variety of books on this list, which is why I included this one. If you want a book that's gonna be heartwarming and make you feel some things and also provoke some questions, this might be a great one to pick up. Ooh, I'm also so excited for this next one. Oh, I'm so, I'm seriously so excited for it. I feel like I shouldn't be, it's not like super hyped, but it is. The Near Witch by B.E. Schwab. Oh my gosh, guys. Just wait until I tell you what this is about. This book follows our main character, Lexi, and she has told her whole life that the Near Witch is only a story, an urban legend, and she's told that there are no strangers in her town of Near. Until one night outside her window, she sees a boy kind of appear and vanish like smoke. And all of a sudden she realizes that what she's been told this whole time might not be true. The next night, children of Near start disappearing and this mysterious, smoky, ashy, poofing and appearing boy falls under suspicion. And then as the hunt for the children intensifies and grows, so does Lexi's need to know about this mysterious boy and about this witch that she thought was only in a story. I haven't read this yet, but I'm really excited about it. Olivia from Liv's Library read it recently and she was totally gushing about it. So I'm really excited for it. Also, oh my gosh, the front of it says one for Neil Gaiman fans. I love Neil Gaiman and he really is such a good author to read during fall. So this is even more valid now. <laughs> okay, Desiree, enough fangirling about V.E. Schwab. Moving on. Next up, we have The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. Essentially, this is a coming of age story about a group of misfit kids who spend their summer investigating local ghost stories and urban legends. It's set in the 1980s, so it's Stranger Things vibes. Possibly, I'm not sure. I haven't read this one yet. And it's set in Niagara Falls. On the back it says that it's a CD but magical, slightly haunted place. Our main character is named Jake and he usually spends time with his uncle, kind of investigating local legends and things like that. But then one day these two siblings move into town and he initiates them into his little club called the Saturday Night Ghost Club. And they just investigate local stories and urban legends until one day, what seemed as a lighthearted little project they were doing turned into something a lot deeper than that as they discover something more mysterious and dark than they ever could have anticipated. But it's really short as well. So once again, perfect to cuddle up, you know, because short books are good for cuddling. That doesn't really make sense. But yeah, this one just seems really cute. Once again, the cover is so stunning. I love it. Next up, we've got a classic. Can you guys guess what classic I would recommend? I actually have two for you guys. The first one is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. So for those of you who don't know, which all of you probably do because you've all probably read this, am I the only person who hasn't read Jane Eyre? 
probably. But it follows our main character, Jane, who is an orphan, and she is raised, I believe, by her aunt until at one point she is sent away to a boarding school where she is treated not very well at all. The circumstances are pretty appalling. And eventually, as she comes of age, she becomes a governess for this man, and I believe that he has a very nice estate, very nice house, not even a house, like a mansion, manor, I don't know, castle, manor. You get the gist. And I just believe that it follows her story and I think that the atmosphere is just very kind of dense and heavy and a bit creepy at times, which is why I think that it would be such a great read during fall. But another classic that I have to, have to, have to recommend is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. It is such a great read for fall. It's about our main character, Catherine, I believe. I just read it last month, I should remember. But she goes to Bath in England and she spends a holiday there and she ends up falling in love with gothic literature, AKA scary stories. She basically wants to become the heroine of her own and she, I mean, I don't wanna to say too much more than that. Like if you're trying to think of one Jane Austen book to read during fall, I would definitely recommend that. I mean, obviously Pride and Prejudice is always a good idea, but I think Northanger Abbey is very underrated and it involves scary stories in it, so. I would recommend that one as well. Okay, so those are my two classics. Next up, I have The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. Sound familiar, anyone? Like, the shop around the corner. You've got mail? No? <laughs> So it's about our main character named Nina, and as she is working at a library, she loves her job. She's basically a matchmaker for people, matching them to the perfect book that suits them and their personality and their interests. Until one day she loses her job, or I believe she worked at a small library and it just closed down, and she is determined to start a new life for herself. So she moves to a small, sleepy little village nearby, and when she gets there, she buys and transforms a reading bus type van type, you know, you've seen them on Instagram and YouTube the ones that look amazing, like you wish you could live there instead of your own home. Yeah, she buys that. And then get this, it's even better. She turns it into a mobile bookshop and she travels from little town to little town, matching people with books, giving them books and telling them stories and just living her best life. And eventually she falls in love with the little village that she's been living in and she discovers that she might actually be able to live an even better life that she's always dreamed of and write her own book. I don't know if it's set necessarily during autumn, but bookstores just make me think of fall and all cozy things. So I definitely think that this would be a good option if you're just looking for something fluffy about books and good feels and all of that. Okay, I couldn't talk about fall books and not include a book by one of my new favorite fall Halloween authors. So I have to include Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is like, Imagine that Neil Gaiman is like every Disney Channel original movie, but in the realm of like spooky middle grade books, kind of. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? It makes sense in my head. But he just does it so well. He does spooky stories and just fall atmospheric stories so well. This book is known to be a modern classic and this is actually the illustrated version as well. So we've got pictures in here. There's all sorts of artwork through all the pages. So our story takes place in London and our main character is named Richard. Under the streets of London is a world that most people could never even really dream of. One day, Richard finds a girl just on the sidewalk who's bleeding and he goes down to help her and finds out that her name is Dor. And she's on the run from these two assassins who are dressed in black suits and she tells him that she comes from the London below. But by helping Dor, Richard transports himself to this world and it's filled with monsters and angels and ghosts and a beast and a labyrinth. And it follows him on this journey of discovering this world and what that means for him. And I don't wanna say anything else cause I don't wanna spoil it, but it, I mean, does that not sound super good and interesting? Like, why do I not hear more people talking about this? I don't know. In this story, every year, the people of this little town leave a child, a little baby, as an offering for this witch that lives in the forest. And they believe that by making this offering, they will protect their little town because the witch will be satisfied. But little do they know that the witch is actually a very nice and kind witch. And she takes these children, she feeds them starlight, and then she delivers them to families on the other side of the forest. Until one day, she accidentally feeds one of the babies 
moonlight, I believe, instead of starlight. And this baby becomes very magical and powerful. And it's the story of our little witch. I just think that it's the perfect little middle grade magical, whimsical book to read during fall. We are now down to the final book on my list, and this is probably one of the most atmospheric ones on the list, if not the most atmospheric, and it's going to be The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I don't even wanna to say too much about it because I think you should go in blind. It's about this circus that just magically appears. There's no announcement, there's no flyers about it, it just appears. This book is so atmospheric, it has caramel corn, and the sounds of the circus and the cool, crisp autumn air. It makes you feel like you're living in the story. It's the perfect book if you want to feel like you're sucked into this magical, whimsical world. You can smell the food and you can hear the sounds. So if you love atmospheric books, I would highly recommend this one. I think you would really enjoy it. And that is it. We are done with all of the cozy fall books. Stay tuned because really soon I will be having a spooky books recommendation. We love spooky books. Yes, we do. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. So I love you guys and I will see you next time. Peace out.